So how many people in the room traveled longer than an hour to come here? OK, so, it's, so I'm going to give those people a prelude to what's coming after. Um, this journey that I'm on actually was started by somebody else in 1927. Uh, my journey started in 2003. Um, I actually won't see the opening, or my team won't see the opening of the building until about 2018. So sometimes things take a long time. So arguably, history is created by a lot of different people doing a lot of different things in the same place. 54 million people drive by this property a year. And most people really don't know what's happened inside of this building. It all started with a woman in 1927 standing on top of her Dodge, looking at broccoli fields, and saying, I can see a big airship program here in this field. Laura Whipple went on to go ahead and raise the equivalent of $100 million in current day terms from the public to bring an airship program here. Now today, when we think of airships, we think of the Goodyear blimp. Airships during that time frame were, were airships that were roughly six football fields in size. So you can imagine one of these aircraft flying over your head at 100 feet, blackening the sky. This place had a very, very significant play, way, or uh, was very significant in creating the beginning of Silicon Valley. What happened next wasn't quite so exciting. Charles Lindbergh, after spending four years in Europe, came back and in front of Congress, he said there's going to be a great war in Europe. The Lindbergh Commission was established by Congress the month before the Germans invaded Poland. Two years later, Congress decides that they're going to go ahead and locate the nation's second national research center out of the range of German bombers at Moffett Field. The month later, after Ames starts, the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. Two large government programs are starting to create the beginnings of Silicon Valley. The third large government program happened to be, or was created by Kennedy standing before Congress saying, let's go to the moon. What happened as a result of that, a small company nearby received a tremendous amount of fund rate, or funding from the federal government to build computers that were ultimately the ground computers and the onboard computers for the space program. The next thing that happened out there after these three large government programs is the government said, Let's go ahead and shut down this base. NASA, on the site, continued operations, but struggled as we tended to go ahead and move forward into, this, into, the, um, into the future. And since 1992, that base out there has languished from a standpoint of getting additional programs on site to be able to cause it to go ahead and thrive. In 2003, PCBs were found in the skin of Hangar 1. And that's when our group started. As we started with the understanding that there, there was a piece of history of the valley that was forgotten. And we started to go ahead and look at how do we make people aware of the history of the valley from this perspective? And what do we do with the site to bring meaning back to it? In 2007, a couple years later, my wife, who happens to be a commercial architect, got in front of the Navy 
which was recommending tearing down the structure entirely, and presented this approach in terms of covering Hangar 1 with PTFE, which is a, um, the same material that's on the top of the Denver airport. A very cost-effective solution. That stopped the Navy from moving forward and tearing down the entire structure and started to change the discussion with the federal government. What's important to keep in mind is our group, this core group of Save Hangar 1, roughly were about 12 people strong. And we were surrounded by a lot of other people that cared about the site, that cared about the future. But this group of 12 of us were from all walks of life. Some folks were anti-war activists. Some folks spent 30 years in the military. Some folks were homemakers. And other folks were technologists. Some people worked in government. And some people worked in, in industry. So together, collectively, we started the conversation of what brings vibrancy back to this place? What gives meaning to the future? And we started to think about this from the, even though it wasn't a place of children, we started to think about what stories did we want to tell our children? And what did we want our, our children to think about in the future? Take for a moment and think about the word science center. And you get some images that come to mind. They're probably the tech. They're probably California Academy. They might be the exploratorium. Let's insert a word in the middle of that. And let's now talk about it from the perspective of science community center and ha what happens to your the change and how you're thinking about it anybody science community center anybody the yeah exactly what else it feels more friendly like I could go there okay what else it's about we not me exactly exactly so one of the members of our peripheral team, we were walking one day, and he turned to me and he says, the problem with most science centers is they're designed for parents and grandparents. Yeah. Every leading science teacher will probably tell you, off the record, they hate science centers. So what we did is we looked to the National Academies and we said, what do we want to create? And I'm going to start to move quickly. The National Academies is the advisor to the President of Congress on the challenges that the nation has relative to science. And what we realized is we realized, looking out, these are the problems that the next generation, the generation thereafter, and the global population has in the future. So these are the things that we need to prepare our children for. These are the things we need to prepare our children for. We need to give them education so they can face the grand challenges. And together, we can find solutions. We need to be able to cross generations. We need to bring learning, exhibition about grand challenges, and discussion together in a vibrant community asset that helps the world have a conversation about moving forward. So together, all of us, because this is true about everybody in this room, Thank <laughs> you.